Okay, so here we are in the interior of the spray foam rig, and now I kind of want to know, I, I'm a first time buyer, I don't know anything about spray foam, I don't know anything about the industry, what considerations would you have for me trying to learn about this? Yeah, there's a lot of different models and, and SKU numbers for proportioners. Uh, each of the two main US manufacturers, the two that we work with, for any, any model that they have, there's a laundry list of part numbers or models for that machine. Um, and that's based on heater sizes, different hose lengths you might need, whether you want hydraulic or electric. There's a lot of considerations and we don't wanna just clump you in into a, a basic machine. For instance, this is a Graco E30. I think there's six or eight part numbers or different styles of an E30. So when we get a call from someone saying, hey man, I need an E30. It, well, which one are you at? You know, what climate are you in? How much hose do you, there, there's a number of considerations that we wanna look at, whether it's one manufacturer or the other. The idea being that we wanna select the machine that fits your business plan, and that's gonna make you the most profitable that you can be and build the tool for your job. So for example, what considerations would a roofing contractor in maybe Arizona need? You know, we would go through the sizing of his rig. You know, obviously they're going to want to carry more material. Um, as far as a proportioner standpoint, we would go through volume, hose length, you know, what kind of gun they would be using for roofing. It's a little bit different sometimes than your standard insulation interior wall foam. Um, right. Some machines you can go up to 400 plus feet right, of hose. Right. So even even depending how many times can you move, you know, around your typical job, are you able to move more? Or do we need to have a portable system? I mean, we may even get into that if you're going to have high rises and large commercial buildings and you're getting up on a roof, you a spray foam rig may not do the trick. So we can always, you know, go into the options of portable cart systems. Right. Some money saving tips too, maybe a contractor in Arizona doesn't need large heaters. Right. You know, we would want to discuss that with the customer to make sure they understand and that they have an expectation of the machine they're getting. Um, others can be the actual trailer itself, right? You touched on yeah. how much material a roofer goes through versus maybe a, a residential insulator. So that's a consideration. Maybe the heater size in Arizona, maybe they don't need as big of a heater. Um, or the need to plug it in overnight. Um, so it's just something, we don't always have the, the opinion on it. We wanna bring all the facts out there and, and explain the expectations. What, where are you gonna be lacking, basically, by going with one machine over the other? Mm -hmm. What capabilities are you not gonna have by going this direction, is how I look at it. Right, I always kinda of think of it as like a personality test. Like you go through all the questions and then when you get to the end, you finally have like, all right, this is what you should do as a career. Well, this is what spray foam rig you should have. But then we're all done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's take a, let's take a, a walls and ceilings contractor in New Hampshire, up in the Northeast. What considerations would he look at? I mean, you know, it just depends, uh, you know, what size jobs he would be doing. Resi you know, is he doing mostly residential, or is he doing some con commercial interior foam? Um, you know, depending on heater size, you know, we talked about that briefly. I, I mean... Maybe bigger heaters. Bigger heaters for their climate area, which is going to include, you know, larger generator. Um, you know, are they running right. fresh air systems? What kind of fresh air are they wanting? It's right. If so they're... many questions, so many aspects of a spray foam rig right? that really just need to be honed in on honed and then on and figure it out it's not just a plug and play and let's throw something together it's very right. specific to the needs of you the contractor right an example northern minnesota some guys don't they can't use big trailers it's right. a lot of dirt roads and it's a lot of trees and and you know tight spots so they want maybe a smaller trailer but then they need a humongous heater because it gets Apparently it gets uh, 40 degrees below Hello. zero last, like last winter. Um, but so we might have a little trailer with massive heaters on it. Um, we might have a big old trailer with a tiny heater in it. 
Um, but you know, maneuverability, if you're in a... New York, they love box trucks up there because of maneuverability. I mean, you know, you right. those tight spaces in the city. Yep, that's right. So all that ties in, think about your proportioner the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the right tool for your job? And if we are allowed to have this conversation, set the expectation and build you the tool that you need for your business and for your jobs, you will be more profitable. Absolutely. So who's better at selling rigs, me or you? 